You've seen him for years as Hollywood's bad guy on TV and in movies. Now, listen to him right here. Here's your host, the multi-talented Jasper Cole. Yes! All right! Howdy, 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 and welcome to On The Set with Jasper Cole. This would be your host, Jasper Cole, coming to you live from Sunset Gower Studios right here in Hollyweird, California. Well, Ralph, first of all, give a big welcome to my way too gay sidekick, Miss Ralph Cole Jr. Hello, uh, planet Earth, uh, and welcome. Jasper, thank you for that rousing um, introduction. Well, Ralph, we have it. a new setup today. We have a new setup. We each have uh, our own camera because I, like I got tired music. of you sort How of. How am I looking? Well, you're okay because you Is were you were upstaging. I know. Well, I'm glad I have a single camera. You now. do. Finally, and that changed. you told me you work alone alone the last time. I know because that sharing that two shot stuff was getting a little tough. Yes, I mean, always together. Always. Jasper and, Ralph. and you know, Planet Earth of Wood is so funny. Jasper and I are so interrelated now. I did a staged reading a couple of weeks ago. Boomerang. Bo- oh, Go ahead. Always. We're going to end the year with a boomerang. With a big old boomerang. This is oh, this is our last show of this the is, year. This is first Earth of all, this show. I I just don't want to hear your story. Mm. This show is all about celebrating. We have Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, World AIDS Day, and it's our year-end wrap-up it is for our, our last year, show. It is our year here at wrap-up. UBN for the uh, for the for the year. Yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah. what I was what I was saying. Oh, here we go. Uh, go back. Yeah, was um, uh, what was I saying? See now, what happened? Like I, totally, <laughs> I don't remember now. <laughs> it's our church service. Don't forget oh, yes. it's Sunday Hallelujah. worship. <laughs> Praise. And on that rousing note, before we make our introductions, why don't we give a deference right now to World AIDS Day? Yes. December 1st. December 1st, all across the world. We're we're paying homage uh, to all the, the, the dear friends and family that we have lost to AIDS. And, of course, also giving a big shout out to all those that are currently living with HIV, carrying on the fight. So um, it's amazing. I was looking up some uh, statistics earlier. Um, so... Th- 34.2 million people are living with AIDS worldwide, mm-hmm. and 1.1 million of that is in the United States. Mm-hmm. So it's fascinating. And then, you know, thanks to all the drugs and all the research. But then I also heard today that $229 million are being cut from the budget for AIDS research. Wow. So I don't know if that's just partly because people feel like, you know, we don't need any more. We've made it this far. So. I think we have to keep no, fighting we, to get a cure. No, you know? we do have to keep fighting, and they're working towards an AIDS-free generation, and that's another reason why we're commemorating this right. day so it's not forgotten. Right. Because of the new drugs, some of the younger people now don't n- realize the danger and the seriousness of it, and it's still Yeah, they prevent, think you can just take a pill and everything's which fine. Which is still not true, yeah. but World AIDS Day does come together as a global community to honor the many lives that we have lost and to continue to support everyone. Right, and uh, you know, we'd like to think of these people every day, but it is nice that December first is the has been designated World AIDS Day. So, and uh, more celebrations because did anyone have a good Thanksgiving, Ralph? No, did mine you was co- complete crap. Jasper. You must have cooked. <laughs> no, no, we had a great time. Rose, who's here well, with me? I know we're gonna get. Let's Ro- go ahead and say hi. Rose is here. Rose, hey, Ralph's Rose, mother, hey. who who has become our. The matriarch of our show. Totally. The real diva of the show. Yeah. So, you know, it started with Martha. And right. Martha started pat- with my mom. Mar- Martha has passed the baton right. on to Rose. To Rose. So Rose is here now. Martha's with, with us, us in heaven. It, totally. And, Allegedly. And <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Martha, I think, came back as a black pussy. Pussy cat. Right. As okay. a cat. No, you but that's a whole other story. With your father. No, yeah. absolutely. But to keep an eye on things. So work that out, Martha. Okay. I will never. I will not be ignored. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of I'm not being ignored and keeping up with the Hanukkah tradition, mm. we do have a very special, special guest today. Um, you've heard us talk. Well, actually, she's a returning guest. She's returning. But first time here at UBN Radio. And she has so much to talk about this time again. She right. always has a lot to talk about. We can't stop well, her. Well, she from doesn't talking. think she does, but we always pull it we out. We always of her. get it out of her. <laughs> Let's Ladies give and a rounding. Planet Eartha. Veteran character actress, Miss Norma Michaels. <laughs> yes. Norma, and this is your camera somewhere. Where's yeah, Norma's? Norma, your camera. That's your camera for all your fans right there. So but just pretend know. it's not here. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, Norma. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah, welcome back because the last time we were at the other studio. 
at, right. at I Sunset. I recognize this, but it is. You probably have worked on this lot before. She worked here years ago, she told me, yeah, as we I were walking. Here right, ago, yeah. I'm sure, because we're going to hear all about Norman's illustrious career. She goes <laughs> she goes back to the days of live radio and television. That's right. Right. Yeah. So um, she's done it all. Yeah, and I love hearing Norma's stories. Norma just celebrated her birthday. We had a great chat on her birthday, and it was during that conversation, again, Planet Earth, that I wanted you all to be privy to her stories because one of the things about this show and show like we talk about so many things as you know but just to take it back to the days you know we spend a lot of time here with entertainment dish about Mm -hmm. the reality shows which is all the current stuff going on but norma comes from the days when it was really television and when you had to have talent and really and yeah and you actually had to actually had to do something to do something you know and um, besides twerk which norma does also she may take her top off at any point also I'll have to we'll have to keep an eye on that too <laughs> betty white has nothing on normal I know, exactly they are hard working white women in <laughs> Hollywood. why do you yeah. have to make it about race because it well, does you know, it all comes back well, to it norman dennis were racially profiled on well, the way in here speaking of dennis we have <laughs> well with those guards at the gate that's a reality show right there why does not tlc do a show called security <laughs> Don't say more. No, we. I mean, if you can't pass the civil service right exam now. at the post office, you guys heard be, it here first. Then on come to the a lot and be a security. Cool. I feel very secure, That's don't what you? It's I'm sure Kerry Washington feels secure <laughs> rolling in here every week. Well, you know, <laughs> for scandal. And well, you know, they were very good over at Warner Brothers because you know, even Mara um, from <laughs> ER. Remember, they wouldn't let you. Me. Okay, wait. You've reached so far back. Well, that we, it actually has hurt my neck. No, well, to crane no, back that far. No, it's a veteran show. We're going to go way back with that. Somehow whole point it's of the boomeranging show. to you. So you're talking and, about Mara Tyranny, who hasn't it, had a job since that <laughs> show. As you, it always that you, will, that you brought Jasper. down. What was the name of it? <laughs> What was the, the name? The whole of, truth. The whole truth. One no, season. No, because you forgotten. guys. No, Mara Tyranny, who worked on ER for what, like right. twenty-five years then or she whatever. Got cancer okay. <laughs> We were driving up into that van, trying to get onto this lot, and they were like, girl, you need to show some ID. I mean, yeah. After being on ER After- for nine seasons. <laughs> Listen, right, Norma? It doesn't matter. She had This this actress had been on ER for nine seasons. Mm-hmm. She's back for another show, and they asked for her ID because right. they, they, they didn't know who she was. They don't know you, you know. Right. Yeah. It's like when they cancel your show and they just lock they the door. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, exactly. They, yeah. It's, uh, even with, you know, it's the same thing with casting. Yeah, you know, they're all very young, most of them, mm-hmm. and they don't know you. Right, they, they don't know your, you know, uh, who was it? Was it <laughs> James Mason or somebody mm-hmm. who was asked, "What have you done lately?" Uh, and he said, "To whom?" To whom? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I think t- it was James Mason. today it's kind of unforgivable because you can everything's on the internet. You know, they can look up your work. They could IMDb you. They could pull up your videos google i mean i i googled you last night norma and besides the sex sites that came up there were all <laughs> all kinds of amazing things and uh um but bef- sp- speaking of sex sites we haven't said hello to our last visitor in the room who mm-hmm. is finally making his first appearance or, or he used to work with us at the other station well one of the reasons why we're able to get paid so handsomely each month is because of his sex site oh so, is that know, what yeah. happens oh you know, i didn't the, know that with well, the income that's been generating from that so let's so. say hi to mr dennis tyrone <laughs> welcome hi dennis you guys have heard about tyrone artworks you know every month and now he's actually here one he of really our sponsors and dennis your mic is open if you want to pull it toward pull that big black thing toward your face wouldn't be the first time <laughs> hello everybody welcome wow. back dennis oh, we, I, ha- we haven't does seen donna you know you're on? does donna know you're here no no text her I will. You, you, yeah, let her know. We're, we'll oh, her, and we'll maybe we should do a shout out to Rosebud. She might be listening. If you're listening, Rosebud, Ro- I think hey. is going to call in today. If oh, is she? If she's not too high. With the show. On life. <laughs> The show is full of roses because Norma's mother's name was Rose. My mother's name is Rose, and Dennis's grandmother's, grandmother's name, name is Rose. Rose. So Your drag name is, is Rose. Is Rose. Bella. It might as well be Rose Bella. And Dennis brought my mother a rose today, so there are roses all right. around. And I have roses and, on in our garden at home. Okay, and Jasper made us um, those homemade uh, donuts, cold donuts that she like to call them. Who needs Winchells? Right. When you have Jasper's. Speaking of Winchells, who aren't our sponsors, but we should thank 
Tyrone Artworks right here in the room. Imagine that Productions and Wayman Productions for keeping this piece of shit on the air. Because we're literally on camera on air now, not just... We're on camera on air and we're on Stitcher, we're on Actors Radio, we're iTunes, at Blog Talk. Tumblr... Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. We're we're like all over the place, and people actually listen to us. Well, and speaking <laughs> of that, you're also on another show that I've allowed you to do. <laughs> Thank you, Jasper. Called for that Man one. Chat mm -hmm. at T Radio V, which is radio on television. I love that show, Ralph. Oh, thank it's you, really good. thank you, Dennis, so it's much. A little yeah, gay, but I've, it's fine. It's, it's all gay. It's totally gay. It's all gay. It's way too gay. Well, tell and everyone when they can see you and find you can, on Manchat. You can find us at Manchat Radio, T -radio -v .com, every Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's Ronnie Butler Jr.'s brainchild. As you know, Ronnie has been a guest on our show here yes, as well. Yes, a co-host. A co-host. He's an Obama impersonator extraordinaire, and he it, Manchat is his brainchild. It's like The View, um, but kind of gay. No, actually, <laughs> totally gay. With four of you, right? There are five. Of, there are four of us, and we have a rotating fourth person. We have uh, live guests as well as calling guests, similar to our show here. Right. And, uh, yeah, so it's another avenue for me to be out there with Planet Earth on another venue. Thank you for that. In and a, if it weren't so gay, we'd have you as a guest, but I know that's I don't a little do too gay. gay. Shows. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Although I, I did Jason Stewart's gay, but his, I mean, not gay. I did his show. But his is a very like, Charlie Rose. It's very much more serious. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets in, he gets deep into the person's career. You guys talk sex stuff, and we're very, you know. very superficial. Perfect. Yeah. Ergo, what's me? Huh? Okay, see, Norma, Norma loves said it already. she loves superficiality. Superficiality right. sells, yeah. Uh, expra, so. expa calidocious. Dosious, what's right. that? That'll be our, well, you know, but, well, let's not even talk about what our new reality show is because that's a, that's We a don't want to give that one away. We don't want to give that yeah, one away. Yeah, we don't want to so. give that one away. Um, so anyone, everyone, please remember to follow us on Twitter at at, no, yeah, at on the set W Jasper. I can't even remember, Ralph. Facebook on the set with Jasper Cole. And we do have a, a website on the set with jaspercole.com. So, do you ever go on there, Ralph? I put, you know, things are posted. I didn't even know there was a website. You've never no, looked at I'm it. I'm joking. Really? No, I'm always on That's it. That's interesting. No, I went to On the Set with Jasper on Facebook today to see what was going on. Oh, I good. get a lot of information that way. Good. Well, why don't you talk because about Because whoever it? runs that particular, uh, whoever is the administrator for that, keeps this planet Earth very well informed about things going on. So I often look at it as an, a Wikipedia. Yeah. So to let's give a shout out to Dominic Frazen, my oh, publicist yes, at Bridge publicist and Tunnel. Extraordinary work it out. Out. Yes, absolutely. Work now, we have a very special guest um, that's going to call in at the top of the hour at five today. Mm -hmm. We have author Martin Weber. Weber yes, exactly. Who's so very prolific. Yeah. Yes, he's he's got a new book out called In the Mirror, A Monster. And he's another guest courtesy of uh, publicist. Oh, Mike Pingle. Mike Pingle. Okay. Who had brought us Brian Russell. Brian Russell, last who's married to Cheryl ago. Ladd. Okay, yes. just to drop names. Right. Because that's what we do. I'm What's reading. On the I'm, set reading with I'm, I'm almost finished with Brian's book. And then you're supposed to pass it on to me. Well, I will. Okay, good. It's very good, by the way. Good. Yeah. So we, we're very high, bro. We have these accomplished authors. Do they know what show they're coming on? No, they, yeah. Well, Apparently, they just they've never listened to, listened to us. Yeah, until afterward. And then we had Lonnie Loves. We're reading her, but we read her right. book. Right. Lonnie's promising she's going to come on. We will read a book up in here we read robert hensley's book so you, you know we've actually yeah we've actually yeah. done some reading we've actually done some research which is good for the guests i i lately like to uh, buy books on audio tape and listen to the books in the car when i drive to right. palm springs yeah that, your house in palm springs especially mm -hmm. if the author reads the book because it gives oh, a whole like interesting twist yeah. on it yeah mm -hmm. so that's what i like but so we got a good show. Dara, Entertainment Dish with Dara is yes. calling in at 4.30. Yay. Our other Jewess, who's not with us today, mm -hmm. but she'll be, she'll, be, she'll be checking in and keeping the Hanukkah bush burning. Because yeah, this is what, the fourth night? Thursday, Friday, Four Saturday? Fifth night. Thursday, Friday, it's Saturday. Uh, Thursday was the first. Started Thursday, Friday, and that's Saturday. one of the. So this is the fourth. One. Very rare Eight that nights. Thanksgiving and, and Hanukkah would ever fall on the same day. No. I think they. What? They did to this very, they did very rare. Very yeah, rare. so 79 years. I think the next one is in 79 years. I heard 700. Dennis, do you know what that is? I do not. Oh, you, wait. Say that again. I do not? Wow. I don't know. Ask your phone, Dennis. Interesting. Sure. Well, yeah, Dara's calling in with uh, Entertainment Dish. I'm sure we're going to talk about, we'll wait when she calls in about the tragic death of Paul Walker, oh, yeah. the actor from Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. oh. And I want to find out about NeNe Leakes, why she was in the hospital. Oh, I, yeah, I heard um, she was okay. She thought she'd had a heart attack, but apparently it was probably something else. 
diabetes. Vagina. Her sugar was up. Angina. Her sugar was up. Mm -hmm. Right. Probably high blood pressure. Do they have a disease where the ego just takes over and kills you? (laughs) Egoitis. Egoitis. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's what. That's what. Inflammation. Egoitis. It's inflammation of the ego. Mm-hmm. And also, when Dara calls, we have to ask her. Um, Dara went to a, a, a Christian baptism today with one of her son's friends. So I thought, how appropriate. What a what a very uh, new way of celebrating Hanukkah that you go to uh, a, a baptism. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit of. It's basically all about Jesus, on truly, because it's Hanukkah and baptism. I'm not sure how that works. Where's Moses in the story? Hanukkah is not about Jesus. No, no, but <laughs> it's about Moses. No. <laughs> tell, tell us, Norma. Norma, I like when you tell us about yeah, Jasper. Why Hanukkah. don't you just kind of stop it's talking for a second? The, I'm, not, I'm not terribly <laughs> knowledgeable about this, but it is about the 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 temple burn, uh, and they light the candles for each day. The temple, each night the temple survived. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're it's similar though it to has Je- nothing to do with well, we're it's Mo- similar to Moses Jesus. Is, Moses is Passover. Moses is low tide. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mo- low tide. <laughs> no, uh, Moses it, opened up the lake, didn't he? He supposedly it, it, that's not the ark, that was Noah. That was Noah. <laughs> oh no. Oh wait. Wait, Noah, wait, who separated the water? Oh, that was Noah, not Moses. No, oh. No, Moses the Red Sea opened up for Moses. It allegedly oh, it oh, parted. And Norma said, Have you ever thought of when I was in Sunday school, and they were... Which is t- hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were t- teaching us, and uh, they were speaking of the Mo- Red Sea opening up for Moses, and I suggested low tide. <laughs> <laughs> and were you quickly they, ushered out of the room? They sent me home. <laughs> <laughs> and that began the course of your journey from that point on. <laughs> I would say Norma is a conscientious... Uh, you, you're agnostic, would you say? No. I'm a secular Jew. A secular it, Jew. Let me put it that way. Happy Hanukkah. Cul- culturally, culturally, I feel very Jewish. I right. really do. By birth. Uh, and there is a cultural thing. There is a thing there. That right. Th- but religiously, I am not a religious person. Right. Yeah. I think that's true of a lot of people. Right. Even me, uh, being raised Christian, I just feel more, uh, I'm a spiritual person. I, I don't, exactly. I'm not a big, exactly. but I don't, um, I don't begrudge people who want their religion either no, you know there's Any- certain people like we love bill maher we talk about bill maher you know and i love bill maher but he's 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 atheist but he just almost will not allow somebody else to have a religion uh, yeah, and it, he belittles them almost i i don't agree with that i think what what if it's your need right the only thing that i disagree with is the proselytizing, proselytizing which is big in the christian faith burn in hell well, right uh, wow uh, j- uh, the Jewish faith did not do no, it. No, they're but not. They, but they're but they're doing a little of it now. Right. Yeah. But the problem with all religions, though, is that separatism. You know that exactly. that it's our way or the highway. We we know and you don't. And if you don't believe like we do, then exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. the that's the hardest part, I think, of of that. But anyway, I mean, it's come one, come all, come as you are, right, Ralph? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Or, you know, whatever floats your whatever boat. Whatever feeds you. Exactly. Floats your boat. Exactly. Well, we have to tell everyone, Norma has been very busy. I mean, she's always working like crazy. <laughs> but recently, she uh, guest starred on the hit show Suburgatory, and also on a new show that's coming up called Mixology, which I is ABC, I think, Norma. I think it's ABC. ABC. It's, it's a, a new a- single camera comedy. Mm. Um, and then also, Norma will be playing, and she does play in the pilot. There's a new series on USA Network called Playing House, which when you did the pilot, it was untitled. Yep. Um, it's now called Playing House, and, and she plays Mrs. Johansson, mm-hmm. who is the sort of nosy, busybody. Very busybody neighbor. Of the town. Yeah. Jessica St. Clair, who's one of the creators and the stars, um, who let's give a shout out had it just had a baby in january the show was uh it, they're coming back a, a little later because jessica had her had her baby and wants to take some time off so they said in spring yeah um it'll be airing but it's uh it's called playing house on usa network and norma plays mrs johansson and we got to dennis and i got to come to the set when norma was shooting the pilot in that gorgeous town of montrose oh, up Lovely town. Montrose yeah. up above Glendale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like this magical. I bet it. I bet at Christmas time it's really decorated. Oh, it's a lovely town. Yeah, yeah. wonderful little town. A lot of antique shops. Mm-hmm. And 
everybody's walking their dogs. Yes. You know, it's really, it, it's wonderful. It's one of those, but you know behind doors, it's yeah. just crazy yeah. and Peyton Place and yeah. people are just <laughs> sleeping with each other's, right? All those kind of Very little Very desperate towns. housewives. Very desperate house. <laughs> Wisteria Lane, right. Yeah, that's what I love. But, um, so how was working on Suburgatory? That was a long day for and you. It was 16 hours. Wow. wow. Yes. At about the 12th hour, I thought, I'm not going to make it. Right. <laughs> but I did. But you did. I did. And you got to work with uh, Gloria Leroy, who you had worked on Vegas with. Oh, yeah. Or Las Vegas, the show with the show Josh Damal. The original Las Vegas. Right. Back a few years back. Nine, uh, 2009. Wow. With, was, with uh, James Caan and Josh Damal. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. And it was nice to work with Gloria. Yeah. And, uh, they were lovely. Uh, everybody was wonderful. Yes. And you had Jeremy Sisto. You had a quick little thing. Uh, yeah. He came in. He came in. It was, wasn't with me. Right. He had an easy day that day. Yeah, he, yeah, he was only there for a s- five minutes. Hot mm-hmm. minute. Mm-hmm. Ralph, you, wa- you like Suburgatory, right? Mm-hmm. You wa- Yeah. Ralph and I have actually been up for it before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a fun show. Cheryl Hines, a very funny show. Very funny. Very nice people to work with. Very, That's very another nice sort of spoof on suburbia, mm-hmm. isn't it, Ralph? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Did We're, you have a fun part? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's she's going to be going in to do some looping this yeah, week on it. Oh, um, great. Yeah. Um, I read for the for the the lead guest the, star, the lead guest star, mm-hmm. which they had all of us lead for. Mm-hmm. But I got. Uh, that's a, a littler part. I see. But for all you actors out there, that's a great example of where they it, we knew ahead of time before you went in, you knew you're reading for Esther. I don't know, whatever yeah. Esther, this lead guest spot, and then there's two other smaller parts that mm-hmm. we're also casting. So mm-hmm. you were everyone read for Esther, and then based on that, they decided who was yeah. going to play the mm-hmm. other yeah. the other parts as well. Yeah. But um, it was great because Norma just g- loves to work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're a total trooper, and that's why I love hearing your stories. I love working. I mean, you know, I'm at an age now where I don't want to sit home anymore, honey. I've mm-hmm. got a few years left. Thank you. <laughs> you know, work begins work. And one thing that you said to me on the phone is that with the age that you are now, you've learned not to care as much. And it makes it's it true. easier for you, and I like, and I think that's such. It's true. It's you can only get that advice from a veteran like yourself. That's not something that the young people know because they haven't lived a life. Right. Let's let's talk about that a little. Well, I think that as you grow older, all the traumas that we have in youth, everything is so dramatic, you know, dramatic, and life and death, relationships, and work, and you know. It's it's not that bad, mm-hmm. it, right. you know. You know, it's just take the moment, take the moment, work the moment. Right. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. Mm-hmm. Go on to the next moment. Oh, great! And it's a hard lesson to learn. It really is a right. hard lesson to learn. At any age. At any age, mm-hmm. it's very hard. Because I think back on my youth. <laughs> <coughs> If I wish I had realized that earlier. Right, of course. Uh, yeah, because it's, uh, you know, you agonize over everything. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah and, uh, well, going back to your, you know, Norma grew up at, Norma is in, just like Ralph. They have a lot in common. They're both only children. They grew up in Los Angeles, which you never, you know, everyone mm-hmm. moves here from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and just like Ralph, you also left and went to New York City like Ralph did. And uh, talk about when you went to New York City. Had you start? You had begun your acting career a little before you left. I had done a little bit of radio. Radio. A little bit of radio. W- like a like, comedy on radio? Uh, no, not comedy. Well, or, I did. No, that wasn't radio. That oh. was television. But no, it was. Um, God, I can't even remember the names of the shows. Well, didn't you do Jack Benny? I did Jack Benny, but that was television. That, that was li- oh. that was camera, right? Oh, okay. That was yeah. television. I did Jack Benny. No, these were like um, the- theatrical, right? Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, uh, like scripted things on scripted, the radio. Scripted, it's yeah. kind of like what we did here. Right, we did for um, the at the other place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, scripted and. Uh, Radio plays. Mm-hmm. Radio right, plays, right. yeah. Radio the old-fashioned plays. radio plays. Exactly. Which yeah. is, what that yeah. was what people grew up yeah. on listening to in those, before yeah. television. Yes, even. and at my 
horrible age now. I can't even remember the titles. <laughs> well, please, I can't remember anything, and I'm not as old as Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Which you, I'm not actually. I but keep you freaking, remember the forgotten. You just look you? young. Oh, and and just like you and the soloist. Okay. Which, by the way, <laughs> Planet Earth. If you have not rented the soloist, it run. Don't it, walk it is one of it. Ralph's greatest performances. It, I know a lot of yeah. people think Will Smith stole that show. Right? Was he in the movie? <laughs> no, it was actually. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie Foxx, Fox. yeah, they're all the same. Say, I yeah. can't tell them. Wesley Snipes, I think Jamie Foxx, One's married Will to Smith. a lesbian, one's single. Smith, I can't whatever. tell apart, okay. whatever. <laughs> but uh, again, the solo is run, don't walk, right? And of course, The Forgotten is also on DVDs because I've gotten three, three cent checks for that, right? But, yeah. <laughs> we just boomeranged right off of Norma onto both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just came in and pulled the c curtain right on back. I know, right? Yeah. Talk it's about like, ego, huh? Right. <laughs> we call it we call it boomerang, Norma. Oh, okay. Boomeranging. <laughs> yes. Well, no. What's fascinating though with you, Norma, is because you then you did you moved to New York and sort of, but I you know. also part of moving to New York is like you have to sort of find yourself and. Uh, yeah, I was going through something and uh, we moved to New York and. Uh, I didn't work in New York. I you studied. tried, though, didn't you? I, I, stu I tried. And I studied. Mm -hmm. I studied with Uta Hagen. Oh, wow. And uh, she was wonderful. And uh, had a lot of fun. Made yeah. a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Did D a lot of terrible mm -hmm. things. But is uh, that, where that you, was okay. Is that and where I, you went on a, 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 a stage audition? And I went on a Tell that story. I was not a stage <laughs> audition. It was... It Burlesque. Was, it was a television audition. Oh, okay. And they... I was so insecure <laughs> that when I came in the office, they looked at me after I talked to them a few minutes. They said, have you ever seen a script? <laughs> <laughs> they said, honey, have you ever seen a script? <laughs> and you said, yes. <laughs> I, I said, yes. <laughs> I obviously didn't get the job. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, New York was a chance for you to, to grow up and... I had Smoke a lot. Of, pod I had a lot of fun experiences there. I, um, <laughs> I had to get a job. Mm -hmm. I had to work, so I got myself a job in a uh, chemical testing company, <laughs> Foster D. Snell. Where they test on humans? Uh, yeah, they, they, you know, they give give you a little thing. They testing. Oh. Stuff. <laughs> so I lived in the village when I was making friends in the village. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I got them. Well, they, you know, everybody was broke. Everybody, right. nobody had any money. So I'd get them in to get tested. They get paid five. It's five, like donating five, sperm. Five bucks a test. Like a yeah. sperm donation. Exactly. Ralph. So I was so popular. They come and they say, "Come on, we'll go shopping. We'll cook. You go shopping." I was feeding half of the village. So you pay for everything. I, you go buy yeah, it, and I'll cook I it. Realized, I wasn't popular. I was feeding the goddamn village. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a laugh track here. There's nothing wrong with it. We're on three cameras, actually. This Ralph, we're on three camera with Norma. Know, it's great hate. Uh, it's just it like a. Fun. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and do question your cinematographer like you normally do. Yeah, no, can, no. How am I looking? Because you have a remote there, you can do a close up. Oh, on I'm my, gonna check on I you right am now. Camera number one. Hand a little shiny, remote. but fine. Hand me that remote. Uh, oh yeah, we have a remote control, but what do you, you don't know what you're doing? No, Tony showed me how. Oh, Ra okay. Ralph's going to control the shots. You I look wanna, good, Ralph. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did this watch? Do you, is there a close up of me? Well, Can first you of all, you do realize that unless people are live streaming, they're not seeing us right now. But oh, go ahead. well, Planet Earth is live. Streaming oh, thank now. you. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, you look good, Ralph. There you are. Is that a close up of me? I can't. See. Okay, here we go. See, I miss. Oh, some we have a call coming in. We do already. Yeah. Oh, I think this is our entertainment dish with Dara. I'm so glad I happened to look. You see, it just see? took a glimpse is, at the. Is this Dara? Hi, everybody. Hey, hey Dara. Dara. Hi, Norma. Hi, Jasper. Hi, Ralph. Hi, Dara. Hi, Dara. We, Dara, we have a too. whole new You're all setup set now. today. Let me try and hear you better. Huh? Okay, there we go. Okay. I said we are not. First of all, Rose is here and Dennis is here as well. Uh, well, hi, Rose and Dennis. Yes, I know. Dennis only goes there when I'm not there. But, but. Well, I know. It's, it's, a, a, it's, it's a to I know I'm on to Dennis. Already. Ralph, when you see my mouth moving, that means I'm talking. Um, 
I love the new camera setup. Everybody's looking fabulous. Oh, great. Oh, I was going to ask you. Because, Dara, I can't. Yes, you're beautiful. Thank you, because I can't see myself. you're all buffed out. Thank you, Dara. And look at Norma with her peach Oranges. Yes, uh, I know. Rose and Ralph? Rose and well, yes. yeah, Rose and Norma are both wearing salmon today, Dara. Mm-hmm. Listen, you got on by the skin of your teeth. I just happen to look <laughs> oh. over at yes. the screen. Well, first of all, and you, I go, I think we have a call coming in. <laughs> how did you see the screen? It's way over here. I just looked over and I. Dara, saw do you like how Ralph is now? He's not right up next to me. See, I'm not next. Usually, I can. Look are you at the, not? I can't. Well, you, it's kind of like little boxes, so I don't really oh. know who's next to who. Just it's not a full chance. shot. Well, here, Ralph, can you? Can you, can you see that? Can you see us Dara? reaching out? There we can go. Can you see our fingers? See, we each have our own shot now, Dan. Oh, I see. Okay. So when you're here... Well, I don't see him next to you still, but I, I get the joke. No, he's, that's the whole you're point. You're to Ralph he's, left. he's not next to me. Yeah. yeah. See, remember I used to be right next to him, and then I could look at the screen and do stuff, but yes. now I'm not over there anymore, so um, Jasper has to do it all himself. <laughs> Which is, oh, Eric, dear. Did Eric he have a coffee? <laughs> I thought he has a coffee. While, yeah, he has a coffee here, and he brought donuts, too, right. while you were on hold. Well, Dara... I, I saw you eating earlier, Ralph. You eat well on camera. Thank you, Dara. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, he can't I have, upstage me, though, like he has I have to promo look at tape. last month's show because Jasper was telling me that I am just, like, totally eating a donut. It's yeah, a, but you know when you're fit and you eat like that, who cares? I love, what's the remote control in your right hand for? Oh, yeah. Oh, now, to, is it, he thinks he's going to control working? the shots. Because I thought, <laughs> like, did anything happen when I did that? No. Basically, no. you have no control, no power. Because no. Tony was showing me. Where well, I, that, oh. He was just placating where you, Ralph. That doesn't even work. The camera's smoking now. Oh. Camera's okay, so up. let's get to Hanukkah. Let's get to yes. Hanukkah. This yes. night. Well, this is why you and Norma are our Jewesses here celebrating yes, Hanukkah. The queen, Shalom. And Shalom. I can only hope to be like her. Uh, oh, it is you. the fifth night. It started last Wednesday night, November 27th, and it goes through December 5th, Thursday night. Yes. And it's the first time in 125 years that Hanukkah and Thanksgiving have been together at the same time. The last time was 1888. Wow. Yes, and that's all I know. Norma, do you remember that? <laughs> she'll she'll get she'll kill me later for that. No, oh, that you're hilarious. I'm almost there, not quite. <laughs> well, Dara, did um, what have you been receiving? That's what's most what important. Because you get a gift well, tonight. I've just been, you know. Uh, what did I receive? Nothing really, to be honest. It, everything was, it's been a little chaotic. As you know, I've been busy doing certain things. Uh-huh. And um, so the fact that it was with Thanksgiving and, you know, we had two Thanksgivings, one with my, uh, with just us four and my father and some friends. And then Friday we were up at the Scullies. So it's been a little hectic trying to get Hanukkah in there, but we're actually celebrating. We celebrated the first night and we're celebrating tonight. Uh, what are you doing tonight? We're going to have latkes and dinner and light the candles. Oh, oh did you cook? Yes. Are you cooking? Uh, no. Oh, thank God. Uh, Kevin actually went, oh, God bless him. I was out of baptism earlier. I had to. William's we talked buddy. about that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So I was there with him and I said to Kevin, get the Trader Joe's latkes. And oh. he got some box and we were going to mix eggs. I just looked at him and said, no. So he went out and got the Trader Joe's frozen, already made Put them on the baking pan, stick them in the oven, and good old Trader up your Joe's. And it's not as much mess. They have everything at Trader Joe's. They do. Poor Kevin, he is such oh, a saint. Oh, poor Kevin, I know he has yeah. such a rough life. Poor no, Dennis and poor Kevin, do, you know. Poor <laughs> Dennis and poor Kevin. Do they taste like the Yiddish latkes? They do. They taste really good. My girlfriend oh, actually, who is a really good cook, she had them on. Uh, she had them them for us the other night, the first night. Oh, I she love just them. didn't have the time to make them by scratch. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yes. Well, did you at the baptism today? Did you feel Did you feel the urge to dunk yourself in the water? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Not for one iota. I'm very happy being Jewish. Well, I've been baptized twice. Once at, tw- at twelve, and then again at eighteen. Just, I guess, my family felt I needed it twice, <laughs> just in oh, case. Oh wow! Okay. You know, and probably should have yeah. had it done since then. But no, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm exactly what Norma said. You know, I'm groovy with everybody doing their own thing. Just don't tell me what to do. That's right. right. Exactly. That's so right. So that means you were baptized after the lightning strike. The I was time. baptized. Yeah, the, the, yeah, of course, the first time before, mm-hmm. and then the second time at eighteen. But you know, whatever. 
How'd that work out for you? Which time? <laughs> After the first time. <laughs> is that Dennis? Yes, yes. that's Dennis, Dara. He's How'd that work out for you? I, I, he doesn't know that I can mute his his mic as well. So, you know, oh, he's, it's, it's taken funny. him on all year to get here. But now that he's here, I'll have to cut him off. <laughs> <laughs> How's the new car? Oh, loving oh, it, loving it. Dennis is loving it. I was that the new car in the lot today? No. Okay, no, no. that's Norma's car, which is kind of new. I got both. Uh, that, I, that new Ma- that Mazda is yours. That's no- Norma's little sports car that d- you were driving today. Yeah, Norma's what got What happened a- to your car? I didn't know you had a new car. Uh, it had a, uh, two years now. It's two years old. I got it in eleven. Oh. Yeah, Norma's got a, Ma- a oh, Mazda. Oh God, I'm so. And ad- it is all scratched up already. Well, <laughs> it looks so nice. Oh, that's why Fanny's there. I th- the last time I saw your car is when we had lunch together at I Marie Callender's. Yeah. Yes, no, we, and I've been honored to get to go to both uh, car lots with Norma <laughs> and haggled. There and then haggled for Dennis. They okay. were so ha- helpful. Well, I started up both yesterday with Dennis and at Norma's. Mm-hmm. I told them that I my parents owned a car dealership and I grew up selling cars. My <laughs> 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 oh, didn't wow. I? Did I? Did yes. Uh, mine's in the garage. I don't take it out. I see. Oh yeah. <laughs> Though anyway, so Dara, what? Well, we mentioned. So, uh, so you were asking about. I've been listening since you started. You've been asking about Nini Nini from the Real Housewives of, of Atlanta, which I do not watch anymore. Um, she had blood clots in her lungs. Oh. And what had happened is she was traveling too much. Oh. So they luckily found out. I think she was having trouble breathing, and that was how they found out. Mm. That's so like what you can get. You can get those in your leg, too, from traveling, right? When yes. you don't move around yes. enough, right? Yes. Yes. And then we mentioned so, Paul Walker's tragic oh death. Oh, my goodness. You know, I'm just going to say it because I say whatever comes to mind, and I... You know, it wouldn't be a holiday weekend without a celebrity death, right? I mean, right. unfortunately, that's just the way it seems in our culture. They right. are making the biggest deal about this. I know. Not that he wasn't or isn't <clears throat> a big deal, and I know that movie was quite popular and big and everything, but this is just everywhere now. Yeah, it is. It's, um, I, I posted today also, I kind of felt bad for the, the driver, Roger Rodas, because he, right. he just kept being called the driver. And this guy's really accomplished. You know, did you see that he's actually his financial advisor? He's one of the top Merrill Lynch financial planners, and he's been handling all Paul's money and a lot of other celebrities and owns this racing car company. So I always feel bad when it's just they just sort of barely mention the other person. Yeah, and you know, we don't know what happened, and they've probably done this a million times before, and it was fine, and it's just very sad. I guess Paul's eight-year-old son was there trying to get his father out of the car, Mm. which is tragic. Oh, actually, I I think it was actually, Paul just has a 15-year-old daughter. I think it's Roger's son. No, that's what I said, Roger's eight-year-old son. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That's um, okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll watch we'll, for it. In no, well, yeah, because that is obviously we, the big news, and it's just everywhere, and people are saying live fast, die young, and thinking, there is some they tragic. Must not be Jewish. There is some, Jewish people don't say that. Mm, the, <laughs> there's some tragic irony, though, that you're you're known for this movie about Fast and Furious and driving fast in cars, and then you die in one. That's just a little Well, spooky. obviously, he did a movie about things that he loved, which, good for him. I mean, right, how he, wonderful to do the work that you, you know, something that you love yourself and you're, you know, in a movie about it. It's just, well, right, it's and, just sad. It's just sad. And he but was I, quoted I, I just, a little blown away how much media it's getting. Right. Well, he was quoted as saying that if I ever die in <clears throat> doing what I love to do, it, I will have had a smile on my face. Oh, oh well. Okay. I don't think he yeah, thought he'd be that. burning well, in a car. Well, rest in peace to both of them, horrible. for sure. Right. right. Mazel, <laughs> shalom, shabbat. Yeah, that's oh, so interesting. Um, now, you were saying that Roger was the financial advisor to Paul. Yeah. And now they're both deceased. Yeah. So what I want, I I hope that all their accounts were in order because now who I'm does, sure they were. Well, he worked for Merrill Lynch, mm. so I'm sure it's all covered. I'm sure they were. I yeah. mean, I the, think that when you do risky type of hobbies or work, you're smart enough, hopefully, to. Well, the have big question is, up. they were right in the middle of filming the seventh movie in Atlanta right now, so it's almost a they matter. They have seven of them. This is the seventh one. Oh mm. my goodness. What I was going to talk about with Paul is, I was saying to Ralph, you know, Paul came on the scene originally. He was supposed to be like the new Brad Pitt years ago. He was going to be the, because mm-hmm. he kind of looked like him. And then Fast and the Furious took off and he tried other films. But what I always kind of liked about him is he, 
he f- never felt this need to be like, I'm going to show everyone I'm this great actor. I'm just going to mm-hmm. cash in and do these, this blockbuster chain of movies, this franchise, and make my money. And he was a real humanitarian. I guess he gave a lot to Haiti and now to the uh, the victims of the typhoon typhoon that just hit. Mm-hmm. So Philippines. In the mm-hmm. Philippines. And the last thing I'll say, the most tragic thing was this happened just down the street from the charity that he runs and that's why they all were they heard the car crash and they ran up to mm-hmm. to see what had happened so that's the saddest yeah, part very around, sad <clears throat> especially around the holidays so but mm-hmm. let's get to something even real shallow let's bring up something get us off anything about tiger woods dara you know i don't know i haven't been following i don't you know he's he's nobody i follow at all i know that his girlfriend hurt her knee Lindsay and Vaughn. so she wasn't sure if she was going to be able to you know mm-hmm. She's just day to day, is what she said. Mm. Um, but no, I don't really follow um, um, Tiger Woods. There, you heard the news about Alec Baldwin. Getting MSNBC fired. MSNBC finally canceled Thank his God, show. Finally, am I the only person that's tired of giving him a pass? I couldn't believe on Facebook. Well, how many... he really blew it when he said something about it was the really gay people at the network that Eps- I don't know. Just, uh, he yeah. needs to shut up if he wants to work. Yeah, he's Wait, just, what did just he like say? Roseanne Barr needs to shut up if she wants to work. Mm. Well, luckily for Roseanne, she's so rich she doesn't have to, but she made a comment today about, I don't know that she's that off on that, that <laughs> Hollywood hates women. And that you know, and it is true the pay scale is still way off and stuff like that, but it's hard when someone like Roseanne, who's made Millions. practically billions off of television, mm-hmm. says something mm-hmm. like that. But Alec is just so... I think yeah, he's he overrated. Really, first well, you of know, all. The, bum, the thing is, too, his wife, Hilaria, told him that's the woman that, you know, kind of got in my face. And, you know, there's no footage of this reporter, paparazzi, getting in Hilaria's face. And she kind of, like, antagonized him. It's interesting. I mean, if you think about it, it's like, just, you know, I don't know. If I had a volatile husband, I would not antagonize him if I want him to stay working. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's not forget Kim Basinger talked. You know, it's oh yeah, she's, well, she's probably talked just about it. There and thinking, I can so everybody. I can give you the Athens, Georgia version because she's from Athens, and I know stories when Alec would come to Athens with Kim and get thrown out of bars because he was so such an asshole and so obnoxious and mm-hmm. fought with I know, people. No, but you think you just be tired, and you're. I mean, he's in his fifties. He doesn't look super fit. You think you'd just be tired, and you just would want to preserve yourself and get your work going and not not ruin your I don't know it just seems silly well so many people say how he, he can't be anti-gay because he's you know his hairdresser Richard who's also a dear friend of Jennifer Bassey's you know they're like closer than ever and and all these people but I always concern when it's like with with Paula Dean or other people if the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you're angry is the n-word or the f-word you're calling someone a, a faggot or it it seems to just be the first thing that comes to him when he gets pissed. Right. You know? So that tells right. me there's a lot of issues going on. So I'm glad right. I, in this. Did anybody watch his show anyway? I didn't even really know. I did. I watched the one with Deborah Winger. Oh, I adore her. Oh, I no, really th- miss her That I would have liked to see. Oh, Deborah Winger. I watched that one. She's just a very fascinating, well, she, grounded woman. Well, she wasn't grounded when she worked, but did she talk about... No, and she said that. Yeah, did she, she talk she about... She to get out of it because she was just off her rocker. She yeah, said that. Yeah, I would love to see that. I wonder if that's on a... On you could probably find it. She's just a... You know, she really cares. She's she's talking about, um, oh, there's some environmental issue that she's very passionate about. and Yeah, I know it was a good show. But it's interesting because even when he interviews people, he didn't have the, the coup to know when to shut up and let them talk. Mm, right. He's it was, so. he's sort of an egomaniac. Yeah, unfortunately. I, I mean, do like him, though. I know. I no, I, listen, I'll say. I think he's charming, and I think I used to see him at Serenia Park in Woodland Hills with his daughter Ireland when him and Kim were split up, and we lived up in Woodland Hills, and he just looked sad. Right. Just with something Well, that whole family, him. both, I mean, his brother Stephen is just a born-again freak. I mean, he's a nightmare, Stephen Baldwin, and then... Uh, what's the other one? Daniel was the drug addict, right? A- and then who's the one that's married to China? Billy Phillips? Baldwin. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. he's kind of stayed out of the press, I guess. Yeah. But, 
But they're, they, they, those Baldwin brothers, they have this entitled, they act like they're the Kennedys. They're like lower middle class working guys. No, the Kennedys behave better, the ones that behave. But the Baldwins are like from Long Island. Who gives a shit about them anyway? Oh, okay. They're lucky they're when not people working. People say, you know, Alec has a doorman. There's ways that he could be more discreet. He could park in the garage below and he chooses not to. So, you know, what... Oh, uh, have some more I'm dairy sure products. I'm get addicted you, to the attention. That's all part of it, He's too. bloated and just a hot mess. Oh, okay, Whatever. Jasper. Go, okay. But anyway, God bless and Are Merry we, Christmas. Can we, can we move to Kanye West? Yes, speaking of another a nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. He's... A nightmare. Go, Dara. You guys see the video with him and Kim and then the make fun of video with Seth Rogen and uh, James Franco? Yeah, yes. they, I saw that. Hilarious. Yeah, what, Kanye released something <laughs> today about um, don't me- everyone's ruining my wife's credibility, oh, and everyone's please. like, "What credibility? Just, what is- just go away on the other side of the world and stay there." Norma, Norma, you watch the Kardashians, right? No, <laughs> no, Norma is too highbrow. Keeping up with no. the Kardashians, Not yeah, too highbrow. I just think it's a bunch of. Shit, bullshit, crap. <laughs> right, Kanye? Yeah, it is. A bunch now, could of you tell right. me what his talent is? Because I listened well, to one of his songs. He has a clothing line, and he, oh, I this is this is what did it for me with him. Although I just he he demanded a meeting with Louis Vuitton, and they said, "Why do we need to meet with you?" And he oh. said, "Well, you need to meet with me because I'm influential and et cetera, et cetera." And they didn't meet with him, and now he's telling people not to buy Louis Vuitton <laughs> until January. Oh, as my dearly departed mother would say, he's not even good looking. I know. Like, quite, you know. Oh. Right, Dara? She could excuse a lot if you were right, pretty. Right, right. But she would say he's not, he's no one's pretty boy. I just, you know, I just, I have such a hard time with some of these people in the in the public eye that are just so full of themselves. I know. Just, you know, you just miss but the old But here's what bothers that, me, though. Someone like Ellen DeGeneres was just saying he is a genius and he's so prolific uh, and whatever. he's so Maybe talented. Maybe he has her on the payroll. But I thought, I listened to one of his songs and all he uh, does is just talk. I mean, he's just an I angry, know. hot mess. Why don't you go I away, Kanye? I know. And, there's and what's an his real name? I'll send it to you, Jasper. There's an article about how um, Harry Belafonte was saying how Jay-Z, you know, Jay-Z supposedly does charity work, blah, 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 how he's really just in it for the money. And they gave chapter and verse of how he teaches his followers to say the N-word and, you know. Jay-Z does? Yeah. I'll send you the article. Somebody had just posted to Well, don't forget, he, you know, Beyonce got criticized. Remember, she went over and performed where it was in the Middle East or somewhere, and she, I, I know, and then they went to, uh, they went to Cuba, remember? And that, yes. they got paid a fortune and. They didn't even know. They didn't even know what the politics were in Cuba at the time. So, right? Yeah, no, I, it's just stupid. And I think that Barack Obama, our president, has backed away from all of those people that he kind of acted like he was in with because he realizes they're just nightmares. They're nightmares. Yeah. Yes. It's not helping yes. his cause either. I'm just pardon. Wondering, I'm wondering who cares. I don't understand what the popularity is because really, who cares? Thank you, Norma. I mean, but sadly, sadly, yeah. there's they it's have true, millions though. of followers. I, I don't know what it is. It's almost like it's just it's just bizarre. Yeah. It, you're right. We it need just, to kind of go back to the you know Mr. Rogers neighborhood and yeah. that kind of era. That's the era. But he that was I missed, he was sure. borderline pedophile, creepy a little bit to me. Ah! But, <laughs> <laughs> Who, Mr. Rogers? We didn't yeah. leave him alone with any kids. No, but I mean, he had like... I know what you mean. He, there was a, when I look back on it, even Captain Kangaroo, now look at him. Think I was going to mention him. Think about Captain Kangaroo. What, he had like a, like a mullet with some mullet sideburns. <laughs> and <laughs> right. I don't know. There was something creepy. And he had right. Mr. Green Jeans with Mr. Him. Green Jeans, his best friend. I just felt like oh. they had like an ice cream truck that was converted to a sex and van. And on and a, and don't walk past the van. I'll go get you. <laughs> remember, did you. Do you remember Cheryl? of John. Did I'm you, too was, young for that. Sorry. I think I'm too young for that too. Sorry. Who said okay. that? That Dennis? was Ralph. No, no that was Ralph. Ralph. No, no, no. You oh, couldn't oh. tell that was Dennis or Ralph? No, that, I, I thought it was Dennis. He's no, was, offended. We, we sound alike. Sheriff John, he was another one that used to come on at lunchtime. And remember Hobo Kelly? Mm-hmm. Does anybody remember her? Yeah, that's right. Was she a lesbian? Was she in Atlanta? <laughs> 
Everybody's no, I, a lesbian. She was yeah. a real homeless woman on my street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean there was Speaking a TV show? lesbians, sh- Maria Bello, the actress Did with she the come blonde out? hair, just came out as a lesbian. Mm. Oh, good for her. I thought you'd want to know that, Jeff. No, we, because... Let's so you bo- can finally come out as a lesbian. Let me boomerang it, because <laughs> Suze Lanier Bramlin and I last year went to a red carpet event. And Maria Bello and her husband and children told us to get out of the way. <laughs> and Wait, bu- she has a husband and children? Well, she was there with a the man and kids, and she said, I'm way more famous than you are, and pushed us out of oh, the dear. way. Oh, really? dear. said that I said, you? you do have a point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we let her go on. And then you we call- had such fun with Sue's last <laughs> month. Oh, that was She's great. Darling. Right? Uh-huh. She was great. Yeah. Maria Bello, yes. well, good for her. That's great. Yes. All the lesbians are coming out. Good yeah, for them. I'm coming out. Yeah. So what else? Uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills has just kind of gone down the potty. Not that it really wasn't ever in the potty, but it's just kind of stupid now. Yeah, but I'm still a Brandy fan because Brandy and Jennifer are going to come on the show. Maybe if we get No, Brand- I agree. I'm a Brandy Lisa fan, and I do. I mean, the... The new women are interesting. Um, I like the witch, though, because she keeps it I do like Carlton, and I mean, Joyce is just so dang pretty. It's just like, how does somebody even, how is somebody even made like that? (laughs) She's just ridiculously pretty. Well, they're superior beings, Dara, don't you know? I'm sorry? They're superior. (laughs) (laughs) God liked them a little more. I think that Kyle Richards is a hot hot mess <laughs> not hot a hot mess not any hotter than she her sister kim pardon could not even hotter than kim richards hotter mess no Jeff, i feel like you're looking right at me it's like i can just I'm, see you i'm looking, looking right and in. i'm thinking shit i hope i don't have a camera on me because <laughs> <laughs> i am not camera ready no well i'm not we're not doing and when face- i'm in there in january please tell tony no cameras on me I'll just be the mysterious one. In the oh, corner. no. The we're, mysterious voice. We're even going to have a uh, little bird tells me we're going to have even a more spectacular set coming up in January. Yeah. So. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. there's Ralph licking his fingers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Ralph's <laughs> eating away. <laughs> he is in, looking good. He is in a Finger movie called e- Eating Out. Don't forget. Yes. Eating Out. <laughs> Can be found on video. Oh, my goodness. But I think that might be about it. I, I don't really have anything well, more to add. And well, I'm listen. sorry I'm not there, but I will be there in 2014. Yes, no, this is our year-end show. Don't go yet, Dara. She's okay. got to make, she's got um, potatoes Oh, and on to the roses. I will say that we are going to partake in the rose parade. Yes, okay. let's give a shout out. Yay. Since you were talking about roses. Okay. And, ben, um, ben so Scully. Be fun. I can share that with you. Ben January, is the grand marshal of the. Do and don't do. Ben is the grand marshal of the, this year's Rose Bowl parade, wow. and the whole family is going to partake, right, Dara? Yes. And yes. so you will be on camera. Will you be in your own car? I don't car? know. If, you know, we're just going to wait and see. Right. What, um, Sounds like fun. How it all sort of plays out, mm-hmm. but yeah, it'll be. It's really fun for the boys to share that history with Grandpa. Yeah, yeah my father. T- do you remember this rose? Daddy took us to Pasadena years ago to see the floats being made and seeing the roses being attached one by one. Yeah, I want to see the floats up close and personal before the rose parade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I yeah. mean for. Uh, other people too. We went. You can go a few days after. Also, is when Dennis and I went yes. that year, and they're all parked, and you can walk around and mm-hmm. see just the the artistry and how mm-hmm. much detail Beautiful. goes in yeah. to each one. Well, I da- love roses. They are my favorite flower. Are you practicing your parade wave? Have you got that down? Uh, Kevin has told me no waving. No waving. Yeah, I don't think that we'll be waving. We're not sure if we're in the parade or not. That should be. That should be interesting. Mm -hmm. In an early morning, it's very early. Well, you will be wearing the On the Set with Jasper Cole banner, right? Across your, (laughs) like a a sash. I will have a crown for you and a a sash. Oh, you're hilarious. And you can wave to every, all the little people along the way. All the little people. That camped out all night. That camped out all night. Yeah. Well, listen, happy Hanukkah and enjoy Thank you. enjoy your evening. Give our love to the boys. Uh, I will. Big and small. And, yes. And uh, we will see you in 2014. Yes. January 5th is our next show, Dara. Yes, I have it in my calendar. I can't wait. Okay, Goodbye, cool. everybody. Thank you, Bye, Dara. Dara. Bye, Dara. Yay. Wow, that was nice. Yay. This would be a good time for a break. Yes, listen, we're going to take our first break. And when we come back at the top of the hour, we're going to be joined by Martin Weber, mm-hmm. who's going to be talking about his new book, In the Mirror, A Monster. 
and uh, all the great stuff that he has going on. You are listening to On the Set with Jasper Cole, and we will be right back. Come back, Planet Earth. Uh- You're back on the set with Hollywood's bad guy, Jasper Cole. Here's Jasper Cole. Woohoo! All right. Howdy, 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 and welcome back to On the Set with Jasper Cole. This would be me, Jasper Cole, coming to you live from Sunset Gower Studios right here in Hollywood, California. And this is our last show of 2013. It's Happy Hanukkah, Happy Thanksgiving. We're observing World AIDS Day, and I'm here with my way too gay sidekick. I couldn't do it without him, Mr. Ralph Cole Jr. Hello, Planet Earth. Welcome back. Thank you, Jasper. Hey, Ralph. Welcome back. You look great in orange, as always. Thank you. I'm feeling very good. Yes. Yeah, feeling very vibrant. Thank you for those donuts that you baked. I tried this. Ba- is, you know, I love to cook. They are very, very <laughs> good. I've learned how to bake donuts, and I'll give you the recipe. That You don't have to deep fry them. Oh, okay. Yeah, good, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know you're watching your, class, your sugar in your class. Because last month, we were donut crazy. Right? Yeah. And speaking yep. of sweetness, let's say hi Aww. to our very special guest, Veteran actress, character actress, leading lady, whatever you need, Miss Norma Michael. Yay! Hello! <laughs> and we have Rose, uh, Ralph's mom is here. Hi, Rose! Welcome Thank back, Rose. Thank you for Rose. being a guest and coming. She comes each month to mascot our show and to make sure that Jasper stays in line. <laughs> yes. Well, listen, we are right back at the top of the hour, and I think we have our very next guest. Oh, is it Martin? Is, is he on this the phone? Martin Weber? Martin? I'm on the phone. Hi. Hey, Martin. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. And welcome to On the Set with Jasper Cole. And um, I have my sidekick, Ralph Cole Jr. here. Hi, Martin. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hey, thank you for taking the time to call us. Where are you calling from today, Martin? I'm calling you from Taiwan. Oh, wow. wow. I'm doing a trip to Asia. So the uh, connection might be, might be a bit weak. Oh, no, no, so far, good. so good. Yeah, we were just talking during the break, wondering where you would be calling from because we read in your bio that you live all over the place. So thank you for carving out a time and working out the time zone to call us now. No problem. It's not that difficult. With modern iPhones, you know exactly where you are all the time. Oh, it's, that's a good point. What time is it actually local in Taiwan? It's 9 in the morning. Nine oh, okay. okay. So it's not, not too too early. <laughs> okay, great. Well, listen. Congratulations on the on the new book in the mirror, a monster. It's getting great reviews, and you've you've gotten great reviews your entire career. So, um, but I'm sure it never gets old. <laughs> I think so. Yes, we've had some really great reviews for the last book. Um, it's it's a more serious book than the current one that's coming out in ten days, but still, people appreciate good work. I think. Oh, well, yeah, that's great to hear. You're very prolific. What has, <coughs> what feeds you all these ideas that you have for these novels that you've constructed? I don't know, just life, just going through life with open eyes. Hmm. Seeing other people work through problems and their experiences and learning from them. Just life experience, There's right? There's inspiration everywhere, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I get inspired by lots of things. I mean, I, I meet a lot of people. I, I used to be a business consultant, and I meet a lot of people and, and talk, take the time to talk to them and listen to their stories. And it's really, it's, there's inspiration everywhere if you just look. Right. It's all around you, right. As Especially, you know, as actors, we talk about that also. You know, actors have to have life and experience life and draw from everything around them. So. Um, now your new book, it's, I, I know you don't like labels any more than anyone else. I, I, it's been called sort of a mystery novel or how would you, uh, how would you describe what genre, if there is a genre? No, the new book is just part two of Benedetto, which, uh, came out three years ago. Right. That was a big success. And, um, Benedetto is my creation. He's a gay brother to the famous womanizer. Uh, Casanova. Which is a great idea. And um, the, the book was so successful that I decided to write a second part, which is completely different from the first part. In the first part, he spends 10 years traveling through Europe and learning the ropes and, and, and getting to terms with uh, the fact that he's the brother of a very famous womanizer and learning to understand his straight brother. And in the second part, he's settling down with his then. Uh, what you wouldn't call back in the 18th century a boyfriend, 
But what he very courageously says is his husband, and they settle down in Rome. So the second book is is a work about learning how to live in a new city in a foreign environment. And um, it's also a bit of an adventure story. Um, there's there's murder, and there's you know, Benedict is getting threatened. It's mostly about, you know, imagine after 10 years roaming the world, you now have to settle down and, and be content in one house with one boyfriend. I think that's something that many of us can relate to. Right. Um, once you settle down, there are lots of problems and lots of emotional stress that you go through. And I took that idea and, and put it in a book about the 18th century. Yeah, it's so it's amazing, like you said, being able to take something that's so current today and setting it in that era and just showing how so many things would are the same and would pertain today like like it would back then. That's fascinating. It wasn't very different. You know, there are lots of parallels. Um, when, I, when I wrote the book, I read a lot of um, historical documents and letters from the time. One of the funniest things that I came across was that in the 18th century in Italy, people used to uh, give out fake pictures of their daughters to potential suitors, <laughs> uh, which had nothing to do with the way they really... It's, it's like Facebook. You know? <laughs> right, early Facebook. That's funny. <laughs> made up fake portrait to attract suitors for their daughters. <laughs> and the way you got news... <laughs> it's like catfishing. It's really funny. I put it in the book, too. Yeah. Nothing's changed much in the last 200 years, I've found. Oh, right. The technology is different, but the the... The, the deception behind it is the same. <laughs> Martin, well, what is your yes, nationality, uh, Martin? I, I'm born Austrian, and I grew up in the UK, and I've spent most of my life in America and Asia. I see. Yeah, well, having, I guess... I'm a bit of a mongrel. Hmm. Do you prefer Europe over America, or is it just you pref you love both, or does it just depend on the season? I prefer moving from place to place. You're sort of a... a, a I can't stand it. Yeah. A migrant. <laughs> now, you believe that champagne should be served in an economy. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We did our research. Yeah, we went to the really important stuff. <laughs> I, I, I believe that the way the world is organized, yeah. the way banks and businesses treat high net worth individuals different from you and me um, is, is not right. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a, you know, it, it has nothing to do with left and right anymore or communist ideas or socialist ideas. It's just a matter of how we organize technology and how we use technology to make life better for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, I don't know if you followed this whole Walmart story. Yes. There was this, uh, I thought on the internet and Walmart had this, donation box out so mm. that their own employees could have a better Thanksgiving. I think it's absolutely sad and ridiculous for a company uh, to beg for their own employees. Why don't they just pay them a decent salary? Exactly. That would be the That's idea. That's sort of the thinking behind the, the champagne exactly. idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it, 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 it probably wouldn't be such a good idea if everyone got blind drunk in coach cars. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to be drunk to fly coach, basically. Or to fly anywhere, <laughs> to fly anywhere these days, it's just become such a. You feel like you're on a Greyhound bus, no matter if you're in first class or. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a hassle. Right, it's such a nightmare, but we have to do it. Now, um, it you also are you you still have your uh, piece for the Huff, Huffington Post? You have a column, right? I do write for the house, Yeah. Yeah. Now, is that? Is that where do you get your inspiration from? That is that just something that is on current events or it's it's mostly thinking about you know gender stereotypes mm -hmm. and and gender politics and i do keep in contact with many um uh, charities around the world i work with an hiv charity in thailand and one in china and uh, an orphanage uh, program here in asia and i also simply talk to people who are you know, from different walks of life, and they give me ideas. I just, for example, I spent a weekend with four rugby players, uh, four straight rugby players, interviewing them about, uh, you know, male sexuality and, and stuff like that. Wow. Mm. I, I talk to people about what sort of uh, problems and challenges they face in their lives. And 
mostly focused on on men because um, I don't know. I think men are more interesting. I, I understand them better. <laughs> you understand them better, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that makes sense. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, being today is uh, December first is World AIDS Day. Do you find even in in where you are right now that that's being observed? Um, not really. I'm actually dismayed. I'm I'm I wouldn't say outraged. It's too cliche, but I'm very saddened by the fact that especially young people. Um, these days try or attempt to you know, downplay the whole HIV thing mm-hmm. and ignore it completely. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at a gay pride event in, in Madrid and then in Sitges earlier uh, this year and th- there wasn't a single information booth with condoms, nothing. If you go online these days, half the young guys hit you up with requests for bareback sex. Right. Um, I think there's something seriously going wrong. There's a, there's a lot of young people who think that this epidemic is over and, and the danger is over. And we don't have a drug yet. We don't have a vaccination yet. Mm-hmm. And there's millions of people living with HIV. Uh, but the, I think the whole um, uh, HIV awareness and, and AIDS awareness has gone downhill in the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you feel like um, America, in in particular, is doing a better job of that, or do you find it's it's across the the, the world you see it uh, differently? I mean, I, I don't know. For me, it seems like a lot of the young people think that HIV is no big deal. You just take some pills and you're fine. You know, they don't know about the side effects and the right. long long term effects on the liver and the kidneys and all that stuff. So. You know, I, I just talked to a friend in Manchester who uh, got HIV positive 10 years ago uh, from his boyfriend then, who just sort of one day sort of said to him, I thought you knew. And he's been living with HIV for 10 years, and about a month ago, uh, his drugs stopped working mm. completely, and he's been hospitalized, been in a coma for 10 days. Wow. Um, I think that's, that's a wake-up call. That should be a wake-up call for lots of people. And I don't see any difference between the U.S. or Europe or Asia. Right. Um, I think we have a major crisis of, of awareness in the whole gay scene. The whole gay scene's changed so much. You know, there's, people don't flirt anymore in gay bars. People don't. They just go out to have fun or get high, <laughs> and and all the rest of it happens online. And and uh, there's a. a depersonalization of, mm-hmm. of the whole interaction between gay men, which worries me a lot. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think the, the technology. I was going to say, I think the internet and and social media probably plays a big, a huge part of that as well, which only makes it worse. Mm. Well, everyone, you're we're, we are joined here by uh, prolific author Martin Weber, and your website, just so everyone can look you up, is uh, very easy. It's Martin M A R T E N Weber, W-E-B-E-R dot com. So everyone can uh, go there and check out your your books and follow you, um, the journey of this this new book, which is part two of the other big hit. Uh, book. Now, let me ask you, um, in terms of TV or film, I, I guess it's an obvious question. Do you see, is that an area you'd like to see your books go into that genre of TV and film? You know, I'm very bad with visual things. My <laughs> world is, is text-based, really. Mm-hmm. But um, I've been talking for two years to several actors and directors about a movie based on my first book, Shana, mm-hmm. which was uh, was, was really... Uh, I think it's an inspiring story. It's, it's serious. It, it, it happens in America. It happens in California. And it's also it also deals with the subject of alienation and being foreign in a country. And um, that's been going on for two years. The only problem is that uh, we had a crew together, a director together, and uh, an actor uh, for, the, for the, the main part, um, who then sort of hit it big time with the movie they did, and uh, now doesn't want to play another gay character. Wow. So I think I have to wait until his next movie comes out. <laughs> but I'm I'm talking to people. My publishers are talking to people, and um, I don't know. At least they could turn Benedetto into a porn movie one day. Well, there that you go. Absolutely, I well, think. <laughs> I think I it just to me, you know, the story. St- these stories tend to I I don't know tend to lend themselves. I could see them going to to the screen. That's interesting. What you said about this actor, though, right? Like, all of a sudden. They suddenly don't want to play this gay character because their career takes off. Well, 
Yeah. yeah. That, that, happens, so. that happens all the time. Well, you know, speaking, I'd like, <clears throat> I'd like to launch into, Martin, You, uh, one of the things that you were quoted as saying, I wanted you to touch on this, that everybody, regardless of race or gender, should be gay for a year. What would that involve? <laughs> it, of course, this is, this is a, a sarcastic statement, but I think it would help every one of us gay or straight to see the world from the other perspective for a while. I think there's a lot of straight people who are so clueless about what it means to be gay, hmm. um, who have such stereotypes in, in their minds. Um, I, I had a, a, a co-worker, I came out to a co-worker a year ago, and he just couldn't believe it. He, um, he looked at me and he said, oh my God, but you're not effeminate, you're not a queen. Uh, okay. okay, not everybody is. Right. And the same goes for gay people. I think there's a lot of animosity and, and, and a lot of stereotyping of straight people by gay people. Mm -hmm. It would help us all to, to try live with the other side for a mm -hmm. while. Right. The same applies to almost everything, you know, to men and women. And we are also caught up in our own roles. And with technology, with Facebook, most if you look at the way people use technology, and, and in particular social media, they hide behind filters. Mm -hmm. They filter out all the stuff that they don't want to see or hear. And we live in these bubbles of you know, reinforcing the echo of our own opinion. And mm -hmm. I think that's that's one of the reasons why the religious right in America is getting worse and worse and, and, and uh, why uh, what you have in America, the, the, uh, the dualism between Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. is getting worse and worse. They, they just stop talking to each other. They don't listen anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like you said, so much of it's based on religion. And uh, the Republican, the right wings tend to always use that against the gay movement, so to speak. They always bring that, bring that in. And um, yeah, the, the whole, the whole gay, gay rights thing is turning into a religious war, but it always has been. It always has in, been, right. In the second part of Benedetto, the book's coming out. I, I realized that all the opposition against homosexuality based from, from the earliest 15th century on is just based on religious things. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with, uh, with sexuality or with, with social issues. It's just purely religious. Mm -hmm. And it's a conflict we still haven't resolved. Well, and let's look at, you know, all the major wars in the world are somehow religion, you know, based on religion. Yep. It all traces back. So it's, uh, it's, I don't know if that's how that's going to change. But we, you know, I have this theory too, Martin, you know, people, a lot of gay people have used to say um, they, wanted to, they wanted to be accepted. They wanted to, to integrate into communities and stuff. And I don't know, I'm finding like in West Hollywood and the Castro in San Francisco, I'm now hearing gays and gay people complaining that single family married couples are moving in and so in one hand it's like the integration is happening yeah. and you can't have it both ways either you know what i mean either you just want to be sort of blend when i say blend and go just sort of be who you are and be part of the group but you can't be separate and be the same at the same time it's right. almost like choose one or the other like bisexual right, right. <laughs> well just in terms that they want to be spe you know on one hand they didn't want to be singled out and they didn't want to be special well, but it's then it's like how dare the straights move into my neighborhood right well it's exactly just a, it's a quick segue martin it's like what darrow was saying with alec baldwin it's like okay you're in the limelight so you kind of have to accept that when you're in the limelight people the paparazzi is going to go after you if you want to be private live a private life right you know so exactly what you're saying it's like well i want to be separate and i want to be an individual and i want to stand out yet i want to blend but in I, and yeah, not be so, ostracized and i know martin you're big on not wanting the you know the, the the gay labels as well like the gay author and stuff like that i i, I think labels end up forcing us into a way of thinking that limits our interaction with other people mm-hmm and I spent a lot of time going out with straight guys and talking to them, and I try to have a circle of friends that includes women and men and, and people of all ages and backgrounds, because if you just surround yourself with the same type of people, people who lead the same type of life than you do, who have the same sexuality, then you end up, you know, you kind of lose the perspective of what the world is about. Exactly. You end up in your own little shell. Mm -hmm. Well, it's exactly and, and I think which... that's really sad. 
Yeah. Well, it's exactly what you said before, and it's a really good point, Martin, about with the way people use social media to filter out things that they don't want to hear. So yeah. you end up with the universe of everybody liking everything you ever say and do <laughs> because you've created filters. So that can only happen, you know, and how interesting you put it to we're we're, you're, we're causing ourselves to live in a world that's not completely true because you're filtering out things that you don't want to hear. You don't want to hear any negative things about yourself. And, you know, <clears throat> that's why there is no dislike button on Facebook. <laughs> and, <laughs> there should <you> know, be. <laughs> and you lose the ability to deal with problems. You deal with other people's opinions. If you're never confronted with criticism. Right. Exactly. And different opinions, then you lose the ability to be critical. And I think that's not good. That's, uh, you sort of get stuck as a human being. You stop developing. Of course. Now, I'm assuming, as most writers, you're, you're, you've, you're always, quote, working on your next book, either in your head or actually um, writing. Do you have a process? Or you, do you still write longhand, as some people do? Do you, do you find that you have the idea for a long time, for a while, and then all of a sudden it sort of happens? Or, or do you not like to talk about I your process? I tend to carry... I tend to carry certain ideas around with mm. me for a long time. Um, I, I currently have three stories, three books worked out in my head, and I haven't had the time to, to write them down. And then sometimes um, things happen that make me change my plan completely. I just met, for example, a photographer, uh, Sidney Erfel from San Francisco, and uh, he emigrated to the States from Brazil, and he really opened my eyes about the situation in, in Brazil. And, how many gays get killed and, uh, and bullied in Brazil, a country that I never thought of as especially homophobic. So mm. I did some research on it. And now I'm sort of caught up in this idea of writing a book about Brazil and going to Brazil, and I'm, I'm trying to arrange my, my job around working in Brazil for a while so I can do this. Right. Um, so I get the other books I've worked out, need, uh, I need to put them on, on hold for a while. But I do have uh, two new projects for 2014, um, one of them is, is almost finished. I just have to wait for my publishers to decide when to when to bring it out. Oh, great. great. I write all the time. I write in airport lounges. <laughs> I write in bed. I write on my, on, my, on my mobile gadgets. I write at the office. It just comes to me, and I write things down, and sooner or later they turn into books. Right, right. Or articles for the house or whatever. Well, I'm, I'm hoping the next time, I don't know if you're ever in Los Angeles or in this area. We'd love to have you live in the studio. I am. I am a lot, yeah. Oh, great! Well, we'd love to actually uh, meet you live in person and and uh, and have you come in. You'd you'd actually be a great co-host, wouldn't you, Ralph? Oh, to absolutely, Martin. I wanted to ask you <clears throat> when you said your coworkers, which co do your coworkers know that you are an accomplished author? Um, some of them do, but you know, it's not something you tell your clients in a, in a business consulting environment. Right. I see. I, the, I was just curious how you, they where find you, out, they find out. Oh. Right. I, I see what you're saying. I was just curious. You don't start the conversation with it. Right? <laughs> like, hey, have you, have you read Have Shano? you seen my reviews, <laughs> hey. by the way? Yes. <laughs> now, it sometimes happens, you know. I, I actually met a client once um, on, on the way to, to, to Dubai, and he had my book in his suitcase. Wow. <laughs> he was reading it on the plane. He, he brought his my book with him, and he I didn't know that that was me. So that was quite funny. Oh my God, that well, is well. I'm looking at your book cover, a stranger. Is it Treva? Uh huh. I, and every time I look at it, it reminds me of the old film Farley Granger, Strangers on a Train. Are you familiar with that? I'm not familiar with the film now, and but oh, it's got a lot to do with train journeys. It, it it has a lot to do with trains and what? Journeys. Oh, journeys. okay. One place to another. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just I'm looking at it because the six that I'm looking at are in color, and a stranger in Treva is in black and white, and it just it always every time I look it at has your, a film noir kind of yeah, look to it. So I was just curious if you were familiar with the American film Strangers on a Train. Just a small little segue. I, I might I might have seen it. I might have seen it. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Strangers on a Train. Now, so Taiwan right now is. I think most Go on. 
don't know. I, the, the, the train symbolism, I think, uh, means a lot to me. Like, I travel a lot for business or for my consulting career. Or I used to travel a lot, not so much anymore. And I think all gay lives are journeys. I mean, everybody is a coming out. You have to leave one thing behind to get to another. So the whole moving from point A to B, um, having to buy the ticket and leaving behind your former life, that's something that most gay men can relate to. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, that's why I chose the image for that. No, great. That's great. And it's great having the parallel tracks. You know, it it, it, it says a lot with this one photograph. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you like You're the first person to like that book cover. Everybody hates it. Oh, really? It's black and white. It's I love it. No, it. no apps on it. Well, you know, I think because we're <laughs> in show business and we're actors, we for me, it looked like very film noir it right had a real film quality it's the to same it. thing for me and strangers on a train is an uh, is an old veteran film noir and genre and so if people are not you know our society now what you, you've been talking about all the technology everything is fast food fast forward color everything is in color so just seeing a stranger in triva in black and white just stands out right away and because i have an affinity to that that's why it, it interested me you see how we're all so different other people have looked at your cover and been like oh god don't like that one in black and white you know but look at the gabrielle one right and you know it's a completely different reaction i do try to you know integrate the book cover into my work i try i, I told my publisher from the very beginning i don't want such, just some bland drawings of of hunks on the book covers or, or cliche stuff. And I work with photographers mm -hmm. um, for specific ideas. For example, the first Benedetta book, I worked with Adam Bushka. Mm. And uh, oh, we've the second with one that. coming out now, I did with David Vance in Miami, mm. who really got behind the whole project. And uh, we flew down a model from New York and we set up the scene to look at the 18th century. And he did like a thousand pictures of the guy. And then we chose one for the front of the book. And I like working with photographers to, you know, with a fellow artist to use his take on my idea and mm. create something that has a direct connection and, and, and meaning. I, I don't want any bland, random book covers. And the same I did for Tree Run. Oh, the, well, the next book that's coming out in March, I'm working with an artist in San Francisco and he's doing a painting, a collage painting uh, for the book cover. Oh, wow. what, for In the Mirror Monster? In the Mirror Monster, the book cover for that was done by a fan of mine, a, a reader uh, who lives in Atlanta and has a, a photography workshop. And I told him, you know, I need a, a stylish uh, or a, an atmospheric picture of a wheelchair because the person in the book is in a wheelchair. Mm. And um, he said yes, and then I didn't hear from him for a month. And then he sent me these pictures and said my guys got together and we made you this book cover and i was just amazed it's a great um, one there's yeah. so much goodwill and and you know i i work with people all over the world people in india and in china in in like this guy from i've never been to atlanta i've never met him but he made a book cover for me because he likes my work so i, I oh, think that's, that's really great it's wonderful to well and we know adam bushka he did the our no hate photos which he's probably really well known for here. I've got one too. I, oh, well, excellent! I, I saw yours. Yes, indeed. I pulled it up. It's very good. He's he does great work. He's he's a really nice guy as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Martin, listen. The, the time flies. Thank. We want to th also thank Mike Pingle, publicist extraordinaire, for setting this up for us. And it's been a real pleasure to get to talk to you, and especially for you being across the world and and setting a, a time for us. We really do appreciate it. No problem at all. This sense doesn't matter. Well, yeah, listen, everyone, check out your website, Martin. It's M A R T E N W E B E R, martinweber.com. Best of luck, much continued success, and we would love to have you live in the studio and get to actually uh, see your handsome face. That would be great. I hope I will come one day. Okay, okay thank you, thank buddy. You, Martin. Thank you so much. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Yeah. You're very welcome. Woohoo! Excellent yeah, interview. Yeah, really great. I could talk forever to him. Really fantastic. Yeah, he had really great things to say about the social media, where we are with that. Yeah, and I love how he's adamant. He's really big on not having, being pigeonholed as the gay author mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So, um, and 
how great on World AIDS Day that he's across the world. And I mean, sadly, it didn't seem like it's any better there than here. But, you know, I'd like to be, I think on a very positive note, I think, you know, we've made major strides. I mean, in HIV, let's we be de- fa- we let's definitely be honest. Have, it was but a death it was sentence. interesting. Yeah. It was interesting that you asked him that. That was a great question to ask. If he noticed a difference by being in Asia, Europe versus America, and he said, regrettably, no. Right. You know, and, and we had talked about that earlier in the show before Martin about the younger kids today. They don't realize the devastation and and why World A World AIDS Day is so important to keep the level of importance at a at high. a level. And Norma, you know, we could talk about bringing it back to the business, show mm-hmm. business. I mean, Norma remembers in the early days of HIV and AIDS, I mean, you've all sadly lost many friends. Like mm-hmm. Dennis here has lost an entire phone book of friends, oh, you know, address book of friends. Of friends. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I was having a conversation with a, a, a former writer, a TV writer who um, is going to come on the show in mm-hmm. the new year, who no longer, he's now a therapist, but he was talking about he was working on a network drama. We'll let him talk about it when he's here, but <laughs> saying how back in the early eighties, even as a writer, not just as an actor, he was um, afraid you were afraid to even have a cold or to be sick. He actually had uh, hepatitis and was paranoid to even tell the executives he had hepatitis because they would just assume then he's going to then have AIDS mm. and people were getting, fired behind the scenes not just actors you know writers and producers were being fired off of shows i mean just s- suddenly let go mm-hmm. you know we, we no with creative differences or whatever you know it's it's interesting to me and what this gentleman was saying he's a brilliant man um it not only applies to gay it applies to racial racial mm. pre- prejudice ethnic of religious prejudice, right? All of it. Any minority. Any minority, or you know, or any people, any people. What he's saying is, if we get to know each other, right? Mm-hmm. If we accept each other, mm-hmm. You don't have to be like me. Mm-hmm. Right. You don't have to look like me. Right. You don't even have to believe like me. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's what happens. But just be with, you know. Mm-hmm. I wish we had more of him. Right. <laughs> right. Well, you know, just with this whole thing with Dick Cheney, the Dark Vader, Dick Cheney, vice, former vice president, you know, he's got the two daughters feuding right now. The one, he has the one lesbian daughter. daughter. And then he has the straight daughter. The straight daughter is running for Congress or, or uh, Senate in some Montana. But um, she's has been supportive of her sister. I think it's Mary who's the there's I, Ma- I Mary and Liz. Yeah. But the the gay daughter has is married to her partner and the straight sister has been supportive. But now that she's running in this conservative race in Montana or Wyoming, I think, wherever there's a lot of buffalo. <laughs> 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 what else do you do there but become a lesbian? But um, she suddenly now is speaking out against gay Her marriage. Si- oh, really? Yeah. and and um, But then a lot of um, Andrew Sullivan, who's a big gay activist on Bill Maher, was also saying, well, basically the the gay sister has has not done anything to support gay rights herself. Like suddenly... Now that she's being discriminated against by her sister, she's reaching out to the gay community wanting all the support. And they were like, well, you've done nothing to help us. In fact, she donated, she and a partner donated millions of dollars to Mitt Romney's campaign. Well, she's Republican. Mm-hmm. But I just thought the hypocrisy there was a little it's all, fascinating. It's all hypocrisy. It, it, it's the same thing. You made the point of wars based on religion. Right. You know, uh, I saw a an old movie, Mortal Storm, the other mm. day, and the scientist who was married to a Aryan woman mm-hmm. happened to be Jewish, um, and he raised his stepsons as his own, and they became Nazi uh, Gestapo mm. guys, uh, Nazi soldiers. And they, he eventually is taken and killed, um, taken to concentration camp and killed. But he was a scientist, 
and he was teaching that blood types are universal. Mm. Everybody has the same differences in the blood types. Right. Might be A or B, but it's it's not. And for that, he was killed. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and it's I. I cannot see. I mean, that's an extreme, but to me, the bigotry right. of religion and bigotry of politics mm-hmm. and of people who feel powerless wanting to have power over other people right. could so easily, easily be stopped before when, the ch- when their children mm-hmm. and, and, and taught otherwise, mm. they're being taught that. Right, they're not born that way. You're, mm-hmm. not, you're not born Kids that come way. in very unconditional. And, that way. and it's very frightening to me right. uh, uh, as a Jew who didn't suffer any, I mean, a little prejudice, but big deal. You know. Right, but you uh, fixed your nose and it was all fine. <laughs> 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 now I look Aryan. That's a rite of passage. Yeah. Come on, I all look the Aryan. all the pretty <laughs> Jewish girls know well, that that's what you, you know, do. It, it, it's it's uh, it's so ridiculous. Yes, it, it is. It's 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 uh, it's ridiculous. Right. It, it's, it's ridiculous. And I'd love to do a play that, or a show, or something that had some meaning once with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Norma has said, and um, she has said that she would like to just have one great part and i think one's coming but what what would that if i said to you you know my girlfriend panina we have all these friends that are writers that they could write you the the one great part that you're looking to do what would that part be it wouldn't contain nudity i know (laughs) and black men I but besides that, she man. dated one okay, black one man, man, one I black man, yeah, and, and I've made it. I'm you know, I, yeah, I swear you Norma, for one all your, black man. For all your fans listening, <laughs> you've been down with the swirl, and we're all happy with that. Oh, God. There's nothing wrong with the chocolate bunny. Go ahead. <laughs> But no, if you... We're all the same. We're all yeah. the same. Yeah. Well, no, definitely. Once you go black... No, no, that's not you true. You go ouch. <laughs> <laughs> you reach for stitches. <laughs> Nora, I have no respect. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I digress. <laughs> Praise no, the Lord. I, I guess what I'd like to do is just... I don't know what I'd want to say, but I'd like to have something with some meaning. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I enjoy my work. Don't misunderstand me. Well, I, we enjoy the paychecks. Yeah. <laughs> and I, well, I, I also <coughs> enjoy the work. I enjoy, mm-hmm. I enjoy being on the set. I like the right. whole atmosphere. But I'm not acting. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm not acting. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm being me. Mm-hmm. Well, you did the wonderful play Bell, Book, and Candle. I did that. A few years back yeah. where you played the wonderful part. Most, let's face it, as actors, don't you think most of our really good stuff comes from the stage? Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Because even, even when you get a great part on TV or film, it, 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 it's still up to the director of what's going to be left in, how much. I mean, do, but, but I don't even mean, we and still ca- get to do it. And the camera does most of the work. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, you know... I love the work. Please don't misunderstand me. And I'm grateful for every job I've ever had. Right. Mm-hmm. All the really, casting directors and listening. And all the casting directors. Norma's who available have, tomorrow. <coughs> who've been wonderful. Scale plus 10. But it's a couple of lines here mm-hmm. and a couple of lines right. there. It's rarely a chance to really feel anything. Right. To really, you know, and that's my love. I want to... I wanna but at 89, I don't oh. know if I'm going to have that chance. Oh, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Well, there was a wonderful show in Lifetime. Lifetime, Side Order of Life. Yeah. It was Lifetime. Um, it only lasted one season. Yeah. But Norma had a wonderful guest spot playing a um, a woman who was in the early stages of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. And, um, and I know that episode is posted online. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up your episode and post it on the website for everyone to watch. But you were just I, I liked spectacular that. in that part. I, I even like my own work in mm-hmm. that. I don't usually like right. it. I've seen that on your reel. Isn't that on your reel? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because you got to play all the levels, and the yeah. she was still there, but she she knew she was losing. It was such a well written play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so well written, and sadly it went off because the writer strike. I see. Came at right, that time, that's right. And the creator and the writer was the writer, mm -hmm. and uh, it it didn't. That's happen. yeah. Well, I just thought of something interesting when you were saying that. Let's just look at your colleague Betty White, and she's yeah. now in her show Hot in Cleveland. Is she acting every week? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think they shoot a certain amount and then they stop. Mm -hmm. they, but I think it means she's, you know she's she's wonderful. But mm -hmm. do you feel that uh, I think do you feel that would that kind of part would be a would you feel you were acting not really? I just brought I just brought it up Norman. I mean, uh, th those parts are easy for me. Right, right. right. You That's want something with some meaning, meaning. and depth. Yeah, meaning, yeah, but those parts are easy and they're fun. Right. right, they're fun to do. Exactly, but you can do that in your sleep. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, not. Yeah, I know yeah, what you mm -hmm. mean. Yeah, but like the two character play I did all those years. Right. Ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, um, uh, the, uh, Grace and Gloria. Grace mm -hmm. and Gloria is a wonderful two character play. Yeah, and. Um, she had some depth. Something to yeah, do. something to yeah. do. She yeah. had some breadth. She right. Had some but level. again, it was stage. She had mm -hmm. some level. It was stage. It was stage. Yeah. Yeah. And then, as we said when we had our conversation the other day, unless you're back on one hour again, it you yeah, are. It is going to be the fun, just frivolous yeah, kind of yeah. stuff, you know. And I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. Don't misunderstand me. Yeah. And even on the one I hour. Mean, I mean, I had a mm -hmm. wonderful time on. On King of Queens. Oh, God, I know. And we talked about that because I'm watching you so regular Planet Earth of King of Queens. Listen, Norma. I had a wonderful time on that. And so funny. But it wasn't acting. Right. No. But it you know, was it, it okay. was acting, but it, I, yeah, it, it was. I want to do a serious drama. Right. Let's put it that way. Well, you did get hit by a bus on the episode, Norma. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, you know, come on. You know, but the thing is, Planet Earth, you know, like, we have to have 450 channels, right, you know, with our various cable companies. And yet, with all these channels, what do I always revert to watching is The King of Queens. And because I watch it so much, I've seen, Norma did 19 episodes of the show, so I hadn't seen all her episodes. But because I watch it so much, she crops up all the time. That's and I, Josephine. And yeah, and I know what you're saying, and that's why I brought up the example about Betty White. Well, no, it's not like some meaty Shakespearean gut-wrenching acting. And yet, I've seen Betty White do s some stuff that's serious. serious, and she's wonderful. Well, you and her were both, didn't you guys both? do Boston now Norma Lincoln. Boston Lincoln you had some good stuff to it do it was pretty good yeah. yeah it was pretty good Yeah, but you got to work with her and that's when you really realized oh. what a wonderful lady and again that was a one hour she is such and a David E. Kelly yeah they're, they're, yeah they're, they're wonderful people and Betty White is she's a she's the loveliest lady mm -hmm. she's, yeah she's, you know Carol Burnett and Betty White yeah. and you will never hear I don't never. I don't think anyone would ever say anything bad about either one of them and, oh. and they're such talents right yeah. you know they're not stars did you work with Carol just, too no okay I wish I could. oh me too yeah. but in Boston legal Norma got to this is the funniest thing ever I don't recall in the audition that you knew anything about that hover round remember yeah. they had Norma gets to the set and her character is in one of those electric wheelchair mm -hmm. things i love the fact that they didn't mention that until she got there like oh and by the way norma you'll be not only will you be working with betty white and james spader and you'll be reciting all these lines but we'll need you to be driving a hover norma could barely parallel park a car that day <laughs> but she was gonna be but you did it i did it i never hit the one it took me she never hit the mark I they kept moving the mark yeah, they kept, uh, <laughs> that uh, is one, hilarious one, one time I, you know, I was so frustrated because I couldn't hit the mark. I said a four-letter word. And they all laughed. And the whole crew, the, the producers, everybody was standing around there. And I said, You can say I it said here. said the F word. You <laughs> said, oh, fuck. I said, oh, fuck. And they burst out. I love it. I, that I is hilarious. So embarrassed. <laughs> oh, God. That reminds me. Well, didn't you tell... You don't know her, but you know of Marianne Seldes. I know who she is. Okay. Dennis knew her very well. Yeah. Dennis used to... Marianne? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. That's a different lady. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Marianne Seldes was cast in a role where she was in a wheelchair, a motorized wheelchair, and it's the funniest scene, and they kept all this stuff in because it's her, like, running into the wall. <laughs> She's in one now, isn't she? I have no. no. 
<laughs> I'm burning in hell. You know, you, I'm, oh, you know you. that just proved I'm she, going to hell. She, oh, she was a wonderful actress. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> she really was. Ralph, really, that's the worst I've ever done. Yeah. That's going on the next promo reel. <laughs> In fact, I'm almost embarrassed for okay. myself. <laughs> I was thinking, Norma, who's the actress from It's a Living that played the hostess that Dennis used to work with? Um, wonderful actress. I thought it, her, her name was Marion, but um, anyway, I digress. It's a Living, was that a, a TV? A sitcom with okay. Ann Gillian. She was oh, the... Oh, um, um, it, it's not even Marion, is it? No, it's not Marion. Thank you. Yeah, um. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Wonderful. And, and no, the reason I thought of her is because she sadly died of Alzheimer's. Yeah. I mean, she got Alzheimer's pretty early and, and uh, passed away. But no, Mary, she was a, Seldis is an amazing yeah, actress. Beautiful, beautiful actress. I mean, mm-hmm. and she was married. She, I, I saw her on stage. What was it? With, uh, Death Trap? No, it was Three Women. Oh, the Three Tall Women. Three, I saw her in that also. She was marvelous. Yeah. I saw her out here in that. Oh, okay. She tour, she toured in oh, that. Oh, she toured, and I saw her in Death Trap originally on Broadway. Well, That's where I first yeah, got yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And the sweater that she wore in Death Trap, she wore to a rehearsal that I was working with her in because she knew of my love of her in Death Trap. That's how sweet Mary. You know, is. she's she's of a certain um, ilk that mm-hmm. they don't seem to make anymore. Oh, I mean, you know what I mean? The, mm-hmm. There's a certain. They're, class yeah. and just sort of regalness that yeah that if you were to portray now you'd be laughed at you'd be or, affected or almost. be affected yeah you'd be a caricature whereas marion totally pulls that off because no, that's her was, right it's I mean, that's just the she way lives she is that way that's, she was wonderful she was really norman she married well she married a famous writer who had been married to ruth oh Ford, from, uh, yeah uh, yes who was married had been married to billy wilder not uh, billy um, ruth gordon's first uh, uh, garson, garson kane garson yeah kane. married after ruth mm-hmm. he married marion after ruth garson kane because marion gave me a code of garson canons and in the pocket i didn't she had given we her favorite color is purple and mine is orange I gave marion a purple cape she gave me an orange suede coat that had been garson's it wasn't until later when I got home and put my hand down in the pockets and I pulled out Garson's business card that was in the coat. So it, it we, is amazing. Yeah, it's just a really one. Too bad it fu- wasn't his visa. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> he, but was, he was a wonderful writer. Born Yesterday was right. the uh, comedy that he wrote that I performed in in 1977 wow. at UCLA. Yeah, oh, wow. for um, Summer Theater. Oh, well, it's interesting because a lot of people have um, compared Norma to Ruth Gordon. There's a, oh, right. Especially um, when you had your, little, when you right, had your little. red hair and there's yeah. a certain Nancy Walker, Ruth Gordon mm-hmm. feistiness that comes along mm-hmm. with, uh, with your... Nor- it's interesting because, you know, we talk about playing things like I play the creepy bad guy. I would like to think I'm not really that way in real life. Norma always plays sweet and ditzy and loving and she's a bitch. <laughs> 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 no, what I love is what I love is Norma got to do a movie recently, The Listing Agent, that she got to really play this just cantankerous. I mean, she had a cigarette and a shotgun. I'm going to show you the clip. Oh, wow. Um, we just, and actually, it's going to be playing the Napa Valley Film Festival coming up in January. Let's go. Yes, Norma's going to be in that. And Norma also has a movie called High and Outside that you just did with, uh, with Ernie Hudson. Yes. And Jeffrey Lewis, yes. Juliet Lewis's father. Yes. And that's about baseball. Yeah, it's about baseball. Were they former baseball managers yeah, or players? Yeah, or he was a great player, but he was very old. Okay. Jeffrey Lewis, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know who he was. I had never seen him before. And they were, uh, they put the makeup, they were doing the makeup on the set. It was a very low budget film. And um, he's sitting there, and he must have had a stroke or something. And he's sitting there you know, shaking, and I thought, he w- we did it at a retirement home, at a, and I thought he was a resident. Yeah, Norman thought he was just an extra there that yeah, lived I there. Yeah, I thought he was a, lived there mm-hmm. was a, until he got up and worked. As feeble and as shaky as he was, boy, he... He, he did his job. He was amazing. See, that's amazing. Um, yeah. I have a couple amazing. of friends who aren't in entertainment, and they've asked me several times, 
don't you actors ever retire? <laughs> You know, retire from what? I no. mean, I think because they, you know, they're used to like the the job, and you get the pension, and you retire. But I think uh, the beauty of being an actor is, if as long as we can show up and suit up yeah. and and do it. My dear friend Lillian Adams, who passed away last year, uh, we've known each other for years, and she's an actress, a very good one, and uh, I hadn't seen her for a long time, and I would be an audition and she walked in and she looks and she said is that Norma Michaels and I said yes she said we're still here <laughs> <laughs> oh great uh, that was Lillian oh, oh that's so uh, nice uh, yeah. isn't that and there's a great song from Follies isn't that yeah, the, I, I'm I've still I've been up I, up and I've been down I've been Elaine up. Stritch saying that, that yeah. I'm still here uh -huh. oh, yeah oh that's so that's an actress yeah. Elaine yeah oh yeah She's a force I of nature. Aspire, aspire to that. Mm. Yeah. She's 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 she's. I have such respect for these people. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I love her one woman show where she said, "I couldn't get on the set or on stage without my friends. Two friends. One before I went on, and <laughs> one one at at being your." She's talking about a little toddy, yeah, a little uh, drink. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Friends, well, she never made any bones about it. No, you know. No, I think I've told you the story when I got cast on the pilot Still Magnolias in 1990. It was where I met. Well, I, it was Sally Kirkland, Polly Bergen, Cindy Williams, and this woman named Elaine Stritch. I mean, I didn't. I, quite honestly, I was straight off the bus. I, you know, I didn't know who. I knew Cindy Williams because of Lauren Shirley, but I didn't know. Who, and you know, we love Sally Kirkland, and she's a friend. But Sally was the the most demure person compared to Polly Bergen and <laughs> Elaine Stritch on this set because Elaine was just like a sailor you know mm -hmm. and yeah, you know she was pretty wild she didn't do a lot of TV or film though if you think about it no she didn't do uh, she was more stage she said she talked about her, her her television she said everything she did got canceled after <laughs> two or three <laughs> two or three shows yeah well speak uh, back to Ali Bottom she she reoccurred on 30 Sorry, Rock. I don't have much of a voice because I'm getting over a cold. Oh, no, you sound great, yeah, Norma. Okay. But yeah, I think the last TV Elaine did was 30 Rock, where I believe she played Alec Baldwin's mother. Yeah. Really eccentric. So, well, listen, guys, we're going to need to take our last break because the hour, these two hours, Ralph, have just flown oh, by. Oh, wow, it's already five to six. I know. And so when we come back, we're going to wrap it up. And, oh, okay. And say uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Listen, you've been listening to On the Set with Jasper Cole. And when we come back, we will say goodbye. Come back, Planet Eartha. You're back on the set. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And welcome back to On the Set with Jasper Cole. We are coming down to the final stretch, our last show of 2013. Uh, this is Happy Hanukkah, Happy Thanksgiving, Recognizing World AIDS Day, and we're just doing our year-end wrap-up with my sidekick, Mr. Ralph Cole Jr. Thank you very much, Planet Earth. I just wanted to say <clears throat> the last song that you guys were listening to, Put a Ring on It by Beyonce. It's so funny because I'm watching Wendy Williams. She's talking about Bradley Cooper and Bradley Cooper's wife, and he's trying to do a makeover for her and get her into acting and stuff, and he wants her Is this to, for real? Yeah. He wants her to change her, her name to Alice. Oh, <laughs> she, that's not going to work. Like Alice really, Cooper? Uh, <laughs> 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 no. Well, he has a mean, he, I mean, And that's what Wendy was saying well if you if you want my name, she said if you want me to change my name move your mother out of the house as only wendy can with a different wig every every hour i love wendy for that though speaking of divas and wigs welcome back our special guest norma michael yes! and rose cole jr hey rose, rose cole jr thank you for coming again this week thanks for coming this whole year rose Yes, you've made every show a hit. Yes. Okay, great. God the bless New you. Year. And Planet Earth, if you can just see here in the camera one, this is the postcard of Jasper and myself that Adam Busca took of us. You heard us mention him when our guest Martin Weber was on. He also has photographed uh, Martin Weber's covers. And uh, Jasper and I were very privileged to be a part of the No Hate campaign and notice there's no airbrushing in that none That's at completely all completely natural completely natural no makeup. here's one of our first postcards by the way to planet eartha 
We haven't seen that one. In yeah, a while. that's Look, before Ralph had earned the right to be on the before, car. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was when I was still on probation. Right. <laughs> that's when we were still casting. <laughs> He had okay. not been network approved Shit, yet. Denise Boutte was up for this. <laughs> Lonnie Love was up in Niecy here. Nash. Niecy Nash. Okay, I beat out all those bitches. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Jason I, Stewart even J- tried I, out. Well, I think I booked it because I was just very natural in myself. And okay, you know, yeah. you're so subdued. Yeah. I do. I do want to say in this last year, you've really brought it down. Toned it down. Yeah. Yeah. You've come out of your shell. Yeah, oh, oh, come out of the show, right? Yeah. If you I, want to call it a shell, shell. I'm not sure. <laughs> If you put your your ear up to yourself, do you hear the ocean? I do hear the ocean. Or do you I hear, hear applause? I hear applause. No, that's what <laughs> this is what Ralph hears. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Gaga, applause, uh, yes. applause. Oh well, God, this has been fun, Jasper. The end of a year, 2013. Right. And thanks the, to Tony Sweet and Ann Walker and for creating Universal another great station. Network, exactly. And they're going just gangbusters mm-hmm. here. I think they have over 30 shows now and adding. Mm-hmm. And uh, this on-camera thing is great. And everyone, you can uh, also f- will be up on our YouTube channel. Um, the the actual footage of the show it usually takes about a, a few days. Mm-hmm. Michael Chancellor. Editor extraordinaire does our editing, and he'll get this up on online as well. So, um, and then the audio of the show goes on to ubnradio.com on our host page. Mm-hmm. And we're at Actors Radio, we're at Blog Talk Radio, we're at all those other places you mentioned: Stitcher, Stitcher iTunes, iTunes, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Linked Out, <laughs> whatever. Right? Facebook, Twitter. To you all our great listeners, thank you for another great year. Dara Zane Scully, thanks for calling the in. The best. Dara, you are the best. I love you. Everyone, have a wonderful, wonderful, safe holiday throughout this Christmas season, the rest of Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. Anything else, Ralph? No, I think that about wraps it up. I thank you for everything, Ralph. You're I the thank best. you, Becky. You are Congrats too, on Man Chat. You've been listening to On the Set with Jasper Cole, and we will see you in 2014. Bye bye. Bye bye, Planet Don't Earth. Miss a minute of On the Set with Jasper Cole and get the inside scoop on everything going on behind the scenes in Hollywood.